All right, section 2.6 is going to be looking at how do we use algebra to write a formal two-column proof versus a informal paragraph proof that we were just looking at. So in, um, I'll be showing you how to do that today. And in order to be able to write a two-column proof, algebraic two-column proof, you need to be able to know how to solve an algebraic equation. So what I have done already for us here is looking at an equation and how I went through and solved it. So using my distributive property, combining like terms, um, subtraction property by subtracting negative 4x from both sides, subtracting again the negative uh, 3 from both sides, and then using the division to divide both sides by negative 5, I end up with my conclusion of x is equal to 3. What I am doing when solving this here, because I am given a equation to solve for, and then I have my solution, in between all of this right here is what we call deductive reasoning. I am using properties and rules and information that I have been taught to be able to go through and solve this problem to get my final answer. Using deductive reasoning versus inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is when you're using patterns, sequences, or past problems to help you arrive to a conclusion. So when you are saying, if I were to give you a sequence of numbers of two, four, six, and had you find the next term, you should be able to come up with the term to be eight. Now you are using a pattern or a sequence to be looking at that to come to your conclu conclusion. To be able to use deductive reasoning, you have to use facts, rules, definitions to come to your conclusion. If I was to just look at this equation that I was given and somehow have to come up with the answer of three, I need steps in order to get me there. Okay, if I were to step in an Algebra 1 class and say, here's the equation and here's the answer, good luck, you know, it's a lot easier if we can take all the little baby steps to get there, which are properties that are being used. So I'm going to show you a couple of properties um, that we're going to be using today, and we'll add on to these as we go on throughout the year, um, as well as some of the properties and definitions that we've already been talking about. So today we're going to focus in on seven properties of real numbers that are available to us. Some of these we're going to use quite a bit. Some of them will not get used for a little while, but eventually they will come around. So just starting out with the reflexive property, which says A equals A. This just says that something equals itself. So if I wanted to say that 5 equals 5, that right there is the reflexive property. Symmetric property um, allows you to switch the two values. So if a equals b, then b equals a. So like I, I could do here, if x equals 5, then 5 equals x. You're just allowed to switch those two around. The transitive property says that if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. Because both a and c both equal b, that allows us to put a and c together. So if I were to say that 5 equals x and um, y equals 5, because they both equal 5, we know that x and y have to be equal to each other as well. And that's the transitive property. The addition and subtraction property is allowing you to add something to both sides of the equation um, or subtract something from both sides of the equation as long as you do it to both. So here if a equals b then a plus c equals b plus c. So if I were to start out here with um, if a equals b and I were to take a plus 5 equals b plus 5. I am using the addition property because I'm adding 5 to both sides of the equation. If I did a minus 3 equals b minus 3, I'm using the subtraction property because I'm subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. That's what we do when we bring values from one side of the equation over to the other. We are adding the opposite to be able to cancel it from one side. Multiplication and division property, I can multiply both sides of the equation by the same value or I can divide them. So I could take A divided by C, and I could take B divided by C in order to get to that point. The last two properties that we're going to go over are the substitution property and division, distributive property. Substitution property allows you to replace a value. 
So if x equals a, then you can take a and replace the value of x at any time. So for example, let's say that x is equal to 5. Um, and I had x plus y equals, uh, we'll just say, equals 10. Well, what I can do here is I can put that 5 in for x, so 5 plus y equals 10, and then we can see here that y is equal to 5. If we know what one answer is, we can plug it in at any point. That's substitution. Substitution also works for when we are combining like terms or we're trying to just simplify something. Finally, the distributive property, when you take and you're multi multiplying a some number times a sum or a difference, we have to take that value of a and multiply it to both b and the c to get ab plus ac. So these seven properties that we are using here are what's helping us get to the point of solving equations. So I'm going to go into this problem here where I have 3 times the quantity of x minus 5 thirds is equal to 1. And kind of going through how do you go about solving this problem and giving it some justifications to each of our steps. Well, the first thing that we need to do is get rid of those parentheses. So I would multiply, use the distributive property, and I get 3x and 3 times negative 5 thirds is negative 5 and that equals 1. So here I'm using the distributive property. All right, I got to pause this real quick. All right, now I've got it up and working again. So I use my distributive property to eliminate the parentheses that are here. Next, I would want to add 5 to both sides of my equation, giving me 3x is equal to 6. This is using the addition property. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I end up with x is equal to 2, which is our division property. And so what I'm doing here is I'm justifying every step that I just did by using one of those properties that we were talking about just a moment ago. Here's another problem if I wanted to go through and solve. I would start out by using my distributive property twice. So I end up with 10 minus 6a minus 4a minus uh, 28 is equal to 92. This is our distributive property. Next, um, I would combine like terms. And when I combine like terms, because they're on the same side here, I'm going to end up with negative 10a, and it looks like I'm going to get negative 18 is equal to 92. Now, when you're working with combining like terms, what this is doing here is it's substitution. Because you're just rewriting something as is. So you're using substitution. We're replacing negative 6a minus 4a with negative 10a because we can combine like terms. Next, I would add 18 to both sides. This gives me negative 10a is equal to 110. And this would be the addition property. And then finally, I would divide both sides by negative 10 and we would end up with a is equal to 1. Um, so as I could simplify this here, if I were to, um, sorry, if I was to take here um, 110 divided by 10, I would end up with negative 11. So I end up here with a is equal to negative 11 using my this division property. Now with all those steps right here, again, I justified each and every step. And what this is doing here, it's creating what we call a two-column proof. So what a two-column proof is versus a paragraph proof? A two-column proof is a formal proof. You are taking each statement, each step that you, um, that how what you did each step to get to your final conclusion. 
And so when you're solving an equation like a mathematic and algebraic equation, it's very easy to do to show each and every step of how did you come up with your solution. A paragraph proof is going through and writing it out just as a paragraph. You could take an algebraic equation like this and write it out as a uh, paragraph proof, but it'd be very long, very tedious to do. So instead, we like to just show our steps. Plus, it looks very linear and neat, um, which is very helpful to see. So what I did here was I took the first two problems that we did solving them, and I put them in as a two-column proof. What always happens is you are always going to be given a equation. That's what's going to have to happen. Every math book, whenever you've been given, the, um, given a problem to solve, you have an equation that's given to you right away. And then what's going to happen here is they're going to give you the answer. So there's no more questioning what the answer is. It's going to be there. What you have to now do is figure out how do you get to the answer? What steps do you take in order to get to your solution? And so as we went through and solved this, you know, for the first one, we used our distributive property addition and the division property. We're going to state those out. Notice, however, in my two-column proof here, I don't have all my little chicken scratches that I do up here in the green and in the red. We are just taking our steps. So here, if I wanted to eliminate all of this here, now this would end up giving me my two-column proof. With your two-column proof, since you are always a given, that's always our first statement. Your equation that they give you is always going to be your given. So what's our reason? It's given to you. Next, how do you get to the next point? So I distributed 3, I used the distributive property. I added 5 to both sides, I used the addition property. I divided both sides by 3, I used the division property. On the one over on the right, I used my distributive property first. I combined like terms, which is substitution. I added 18 to both sides, which is addition. And then I divided both sides by negative 10. So then that gave me division. So here's what we're doing. We are working with a two column proof. So I'm gonna go back up to that same prob um, problem that we did at the beginning of class where it is right, written as a conditional statement. It says if 2 times the quantity of x plus 3 minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 1 is equal to 4x minus 12, then x equals 3. What you are given here is you are given the equation. That's our given. And you're trying to prove that x is equal to 3. We know what the answer is, now we have to figure out how we're going to get there. So in some, on a piece of scratch paper, or if there's a space provided on the assignment, which there is, you're going to go ahead and you're going to solve the equation, just like I did at the beginning of class. Going through 2x plus 6 minus 3x minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 12. Combining like terms. So I get negative 1x plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 12. Now I can go ahead in this workspace, you know, I can show that I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides and get negative 5x plus 3 is equal to negative 12. Subtracting 3 from both sides negative 5x is equal to negative 15 and then I'm going to divide by negative 5 and I end up with the solution that I'm looking for which is x is equal to positive 3. Now if I were to come up here with something like x equals 5 I know that I need to go back into my work and check and see where did I make a mistake because I know the answer has to be 3. Now that I found that all my work is correct, now it's time to write out my two column proof. Your two column proof is going to be every step minus my little red chicken scratches that I added in to this. Starting out with our given, exactly like it's written in the problem of what they're given to you. And the reason for that is that's what's given to you. That's what they tell you. Next, we used, got rid of all the parentheses, and got 2x plus 6 
minus 3x minus 3 equals 4x minus 12. And this is from the distributive property. After that, we combine like terms. I got negative 1x plus 3 equals 4x minus 12. And that's using substitution. I subtracted 4x from both sides to get negative 5x plus 3 equals negative 12. Since I subtracted, we're using the subtraction, subtraction property. Subtracting 3 from both sides to get negative 5x is equal to negative 15, I use the subtraction property again. And then finally, dividing both sides here by negative 5, x is equal to positive 3 using the division property. And so what a two-column proof is, is how are you getting from the start to the finish and showing all the steps in between for the proof. So what you're going to be doing in class tomorrow is we're going to be practicing some of these two-column proofs and being able to solve them algebraically. Again, you are given the answer. You know what the answer is. You need to figure out how are you getting there logically, step by step. If you have any questions about the video, make sure you jot them down so that you can bring them to class and ask, ask me about them.